If anyone has ever edited a video, they know how hard it is to take a screen recording and do zooms. There is a pretty solid cursor movement that happens automatically. So all of these zooms were made without me needing to make a difference in the edit. This is gonna be the most meta video you'll ever see. I am recording something utilizing the best Mac app of all time. And this amazing app is going to revolutionize the way that you tutorialize, share tutorials, show people things utilizing a Mac. Now, I personally, as a tutorial doer, whether it be for my own company or for other companies, have been utilizing Screen Studio for the last few months. If anyone's ever done a tutorial, they know the importance of zooming in. Zooming in is a 10 out of 10 way, as you can see right here, to engage people with what is going on on the screen. And having great effects that go along with good explanation and tutorial is something that absolutely game changes the way people see your content. It's no secret that attention spans are getting worse and the ability to focus on specific portions of a screen recording are so ideal. I remember when I first saw this specific tweet from Thomas Frank, I was wondering to myself, what is he using? Because the way that this mouse is moving, the zoom, the zoom out, all of these things are groundbreaking. If anyone has ever edited a video, they know how hard it is to take a screen recording and do zooms. It takes a ridiculous amount of time and no one really likes doing it. I mean, even just look at this class A product, Stripe utilizing this product. It's it's crazy. I, I, I just absolutely, I do not understand how this is such a popular tool already, except for the fact that it works amazing and you're gonna love how it not only records screens on the computer, but as you can see right here, here's an example of somebody utilizing the built-in iOS feature, which also allows you to plug in your phone and then have her screen record your phone, which is chef's kiss, 12 out of 10. So the way that it works is essentially if you go into any recording after it's done, so I'm gonna go to one of my most recent recorded videos here, you'll see that it has a editing setup that's really simple. How it works is essentially it takes your content that you recorded, and if I go into one of my previous projects, you'll be able to see exactly how it works. So all your Screen Studio projects are essentially housed on your computer. And then if you click on one and go show package contents, this is essentially like a zipped file that if you go in here, you'll see that it separately records system audio, display, your microphone. And if you have a camera, like I could be recording the camera I'm using as a webcam and implement it into this system. Uh, it's actually pretty simple to do so, but I'm currently not doing it because I just, I'm not a big fan of doing that. I like keeping it separate. However, if you wanted to, you absolutely could do a little two for one action. But regardless, the way that this works is it also captures your cursor. And as you notice in this recording, there is a pretty solid cursor movement that happens automatically. So all of these zooms were made without me needing to make a difference in the edit. So it automatically starts with a bunch of zooms and that's based on the fact that it's tracking the clicks that you have along with mouse movement. So it smartly identifies the areas where a zoom in would make sense. So as you can see in this video right here, it realizes that I clicked again and did some mouse movement and essentially just kind of goes along with that. All of these zooms can be customizable. So I can go into you know any of these zooms and change the zoom level, uh, change the how much I want it to snap to the edges. However, I like to keep pretty much everything at the same zoom level, which is a 150 and have it as my default. And this is from the auto zoom portion. But if you don't want to have zooms at all, you can always click disable zoom on that one or you could also use a manual zoom and utilize it in whatever way you want on each and every single zoom. You'll notice this little auto versus manual indicator here. And not only that, but you have the ability to change your cursor type and size, whether you wanna change it to like the touch option here, which is what you saw in that iOS recording. You can hide the cursor if it's not moving, loop cursor position, all of these different things are amazing in my opinion, because you have the opportunity to really adjust the way that your edit looks exactly how you want it to. You also can add captions if that's something that you want to do by generating a transcript. So it's simple there. You have the ability to mute the system audio, improve mic audio, mute the mic. And one of my favorites is you can actually do sh keyboard shortcuts. So if I were to utilize this, it shows a nice little preset. Um, so as you can see right here, I pressed shift enter, it showed the 
little uh, mark just like this. So check it out. If I press enter there, it shows the generation. And that's really cool. A lot of this stuff just takes time when you're editing it in another software. And something about the entire aesthetic of this screen recording tool allows you to really level up what you're doing. You also can change the speed at which your mouse cursor is adjusting. So you can see the movement here can be quick or slow, whatever you want. You see it's got like a little bit more of a high tone there. <laughs> I can adjust it to mellow and you'll see that it uh, doesn't move quite as quick when I change it to mellow. And same goes for the zoom animation style. I can either have it zoom like a madman like this, <laughs> or I can have it do it slow like this or somewhere in between, which I like the mellow option. You can customize most of the stuff within this kind of zoom edits and all these different things. You know, these are just presets, right? But we can adjust uh, the majority of these settings with individual sliders as well. And my favorite thing about this product is that you not only have the ability to do all of these amazing things, but what you also can do is add really cool backgrounds. So if we go to something like this one. It comes with a myriad of different backgrounds that look cool. Uh, and that's kind of one of the main benefits of the product is it comes with a really large group of backgrounds to choose from. You click through any of these and have it mit match your brand. And it just looks aesthetic, right, with the zooms. Like having this like padded background is so beautiful. I don't really know how to describe it any other way. <laughs> like it just looks cool. It's got a little drop shadow. It feels like the spacing just works a little bit better. I love the way it works. I like how much action and motion there is inside of the zooms because of the entirety of it moving. And you can pick a random wallpaper here as well to just, you know, go wild and figure out what you want. But it comes with a myriad of different ones to choose from. A lot of people like these Raycast ones the most. And if you don't like any of the wallpapers, you can make your own custom gradient, pick from a preset one or change the color. And at any moment, you can change the rounded quarters, the inset, the padding, and the shadow that's right here. As you can see, it changed when I adjust that. And as per usual, there's always some sort of advanced setting here. I personally do not put padding and then have like a custom made background that you'll be seeing in this video that has like flowing options and stuff. If they ever get to the point where I can adjust it so that I can like replace it with a video background, that will be really great for my editing workflow. But for now, it's just an image, which is fine. You can create presets as you saw, and that includes not only having no padding, but maybe even no cursor, have it for specific brands if you want as well. And then another great feature is that all these presets are essentially in Finder so that you can like share them with other people. And while currently there isn't a shareable option, all you really need to do is share the zipped project file. I have my whole editing team using this workflow. We have it working very well with this plus a Premiere Pro situation. And because it records in high res, you can essentially export this into like 4K and it would be perfectly fine to use in any secondary editing process because the quality will not degrade. Now, the number one reason that this product is amazing is because it, it is a one-time payment, which a lot of Mac apps seem to be recently. Now you can get this extended version, so you get like multiple devices if you have a small team or if you wanna use it on a bunch of devices. If you do only wanna purchase one, there is a reset license option where you can essentially take your email and put it in there along with your license key. And then it will reset it if you're switching between like a Mac Pro and then your Mac mini or iMac, whatever you have. But you get one year of updates when you purchase it. And personally for me, I may end up getting another year of it just because they have been putting out so many updates. And I absolutely love what they're doing here. If you want me to utilize this inside of whatever you're doing with your business, if you are a company that has software tutorials that you need to be made, you need help with this, need help editing this, kind of stuff, make sure to go to riseproductive.com slash content services. I'm essentially a creator and editing and social media management outfit for companies, just like software, tutorial software that you see here or whatever you work with in the no code space as well. If you like this video and want to see other content about how you can improve your skills in the software space, make sure to check out this one right here.